Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, June 26, 2014. This is the week in charts. Sorry for the delay. I had a couple things to take care of last minute. I'll explain that later in the show. Um, boy, do I have a lot to cover, as usual. So I'm going to get a little jacked up on some Mountain Dew. Make his Mountain Dew. PepsiCo does not compensate me for that. But uh, PepsiCo, if you're out there or anyone else wants to sponsor the show, let me know. There's a disclaimer screen. Let me sum it up. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I guess i got to quit begging for a bone here, but um, if it's not too much trouble, if you like the book, I'm not sure why you'd be here. If you didn't, uh, put me a review on Amazon. Every now and then you get a stinker up there, which has nothing to do with the book itself. It's just a review of the other reviews. All right, let's uh, jump into the slides here. Um, I want to talk about this slide is actually not completely correct. I was trying to add a bunch of stuff in last minute, which you'll see in just a second, and uh, I didn't update this slide completely. So there's a couple things I want to talk about. I want to talk about um, entries, but I want to talk about entries using um, a hook type of entry with a TKO, so a TKO hook. We'll jump right into that next. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, let's scratch this one out. I want to talk about the last bull market in IPOs. Uh, right at the last minute, I decided to put that in the slides, and uh, it's pretty interesting, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute or two. All right, let's talk about a TKO hook, okay? Okay, first of all, let me check, make sure you're seeing this. Okay, good. First of all, there's different kind of entries, and last week we talked about a possible second entry, uh, a discretionary type of entry, where you go to enter a market and a market gaps up and then it comes back in and you avoid that entry. What I want to talk about today is just the opposite, where you have an ogre type of entry, opening gap reversal, meaning that the market opens on a gap lower, but then that's pretty much it, and then it turns around and starts rallying higher. Now, this, of course, you want to have a strong uptrend to begin with, okay, and then a pullback. Now, in this particular case, which we'll get to in just one second, we'll talk about just a TKO, and then this opening gap reversal type of entry. In fact, let's hop right in to that. Let's say you have a very strong trend in the works. Now, a TKO is one of those patterns where you need to be able to draw that big arrow on your charts, okay? Whereas if something like a transitional setup or whatever, it could be a little bit more tricky trying to determine whether or not you got a new trend emerging, although there are certain things you could look for, like a bow tie, first thoughts, et cetera. But it's a little bit trickier, whereas with the TKO, step number one, strong trend, needs to be very, 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 very obvious. So you should be able to draw that line or I'm sorry, that line through as many bars as possible. You should have some persistency. Persistency. And then you should also have, ideally, you want persistency, which means that it tends to go up day after day. Acceleration, which means that it tends to do this, like that, okay, as opposed to like this, as we talked about in the stock selection webinar. Let me draw that a little bit better. You want this as opposed to this. All right, did it wrong again. Hang on. You want this, this good, okay? Is that Tarzan? This bad, okay? So you want an acceleration of trend and not a deceleration of trend. And ideally, you want some persistency. And as I preach, persistency, mathematically equivalent to linear regression. And what you could do for that is you could just draw a line through as many bars as possible. So you want persistency. Number one, ideally you want persistency. Number two, you want acceleration, okay? And then you look for like a TKO. So you look for PAT, okay? We'll call it a PAT TKO. Now, with a TKO, in a textbook fashion, if it's nice and wide enough, 
Then you could enter right above the high and put it a stop not too far below the low. And that's how sometimes you could trade them in a textbook manner, provided that you have a somewhat extreme wide range bar. They tend to work really well when that occurs. Now, one other thing you could do, a little bit more aggressive type of entry is, let's say this TKO is not finished shaking everybody out. Okay, what is a TKO? Technical knockout. Okay, we're trying to knock out players of the market. Well, sometimes, if you guys go in to study your charts and girls, you'll see that many times you get a very wide range bar, and then you get some additional follow through, but then that exhausts itself very quickly. So this market becomes very oversold. There's a little bit more selling. A few more people want to get off. I, I, I was going to say get off the hook, but I guess that's one way of looking at it. Um, and then the market hooks up. I guess I shouldn't use the word hook. Uh, some people want to get out, and they're willing to get out regardless of the cost. And that selling exhausts itself, and you get this gap lower. And what you can then go to do is you can play that opening gap reversal back in the direction of the trend. Now let's take a look at the uh, – I'm not a huge fan of ETS, but if you need exposure to the energy, like I told my peeps a couple days ago, take a look at the IYE. And some guys um, played this hook in the TKOs and told me about it and reminded me, hey, that would be a good thing to show you guys. So you can see you got this wide range bar down relative to the instrument being traded, okay? And then also notice that in more recent times, it's been fairly persistent in its uptrend. And it's also, you kind of have to squint your eyes a little to see it, but it has accelerated higher. So the curve does look a little bit like this, somewhat, I use the word somewhat kind of loosely, but somewhat parabolic in nature. And then, of course, you get the TKO move here, okay? Now, you might notice a tiny little gap in here. I don't get too excited about a gap against the trend when it's something like an energy-related area, okay? Because commodity-related areas can gap around a little bit. So that doesn't, that doesn't bother me too much, okay? And then notice what happens. You get a gap lower, and then it finds its low pretty quickly. If you squint your eyes, it's kind of hard to even see that little blip down there. Notice that it began to rally. So in a case like this, you could do a couple things. You could get a head start on a longer-term trade, which is what I would look to do. Or if you're a day trader or something, it could be a fairly low-risk to high-reward day trade because look at the look at the advert. Excuse me, that Mountain Dew is really kicking in already. <laughs> um, but you didn't have much adversity here, if any when you entered that market as it begins to rally, maybe a breakout of the opening range, a la Toby Crable style, some sort of entry in here. And then if you were maybe trying to just fire off a day trade, then your stock could go in right below that low. And if it doesn't work, you lose this much. And if it does work, you could make this much. So you can see your payoff can be fairly huge or something like this. But ideally, you want to hang with it and have it be the start of something bigger. It's one of the few trades you could make where you could go in with a very small amount of risk. Maybe like take a stab at it. Okay. So you could take a, it's like taking a stab at a market. I'm not a big fan. People are like, oh take a stab at it. Take a stab at it. Like uh just take a little position or just just take a little position and, and uh, use a tight stop. But it's like you keep doing that. Well if you keep doing that over and over again, it will add up. But I think if you pick your spots very, very, very carefully and you've got the whole world behind you in that you have a big picture trend working for you. You've got acceleration. You've got persistency, okay? Price, acceleration, no, persistency, acceleration, and what? And then like a TKO. So if you have a pat set up, then it's okay to take a stab at things. Very few, I very rarely say that, but every now and then I think it could be worthwhile. And not a big fan of day trading, but if you're going to intraday position trade, that might be a good way to intraday position trade. What, I, what do I mean by intraday position trade? I mean that, okay, let's say you got a market, okay. I'm not saying buy, sell, 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 buy, sell. Okay, that's crazy ass day trading, as I often say. And I know I offend some of the day traders. And if you could do that, then, then God bless you. If you could make 50 trades a day, then God bless you. Um, most of us can't do that. Mentally, you're going to burn out really quick. 
I know a lot of day traders who have gone crazy, so I probably shouldn't use the word crazy in it. And, and in some ways, it's kind of a badge of honor. You're you're tough. You've got uh, the, the wear and thaw to do that. So if you could do that and survive, that's fine. But the reason I pick on day traders is because they, they, they're they in it out all day long, and they end up making themselves nuts. But if you are to, let's say, intraday position trade, and let's say you've got a chart that looks like this on the daily, comes down, makes that little opening gap reversal, okay, and you get in here, somewhere in here, let's say, and you could ride that trade out maybe all day long, okay? So if you could trend trade for the day, trend trader for a day, and make one one trade in the morning and hold on to it all day, then that's I'm a little bit more okay with that. That's intraday position trading. But just remember, every time you make a decision, that decision comes with emotion. So if you're in and out all day long, emotionally it's going to wear you down, okay? Any questions on playing a hook? in the TKO or using a hook entry maybe in a deep pullback any questions on that all right um, I want to talk a little bit about IPOs and and last night I did a one-hour webinar on that is now up on my website uh, the YouTube version of it is on my um, on the IPO page, and I'll show you that before we jump to the charts. So there's just a few more things I want to cover, and we'll hop into the charts. What happened was last fall, late last fall, I started putting together my stock selection webinar, and when I got to the IPO section, I got more and more excited about it because we were in this IPO bear market. I'm sorry. I hope that wasn't Freudian slip. We were in this incredible IPO bull market in these initial public offerings. And I was reluctant to do anything webinar-wise or otherwise then, other than the stock selection webinar, in addition to that, I should say, because I was worried by the time I got around to doing something that the bull market in IPOs would end. And then I got to thinking, you know what? Just recently I got to thinking there will be new fads, there will be new technology. I mean, we talked a lot about this last night. I won't go into it too much tonight. But there will always be new fads. And more importantly, I think, we're in this technological world where things are moving so fast. There's new technology. And, and um, last night, my wife and I were talking. It's like, um, I mean, this is crazy. I, I made fun of solar stocks and, and solar industry a few years ago. And now, you know, we live on, on, a, on a few acres here. I'm thinking we might make part of um, – you know, may take an acre or so and put a solar farm in. I don't know. I mean, it, it's crazy. It, it's just technology is moving so fast. 3D printers. I mean, just the stuff that's out there is just absolutely amazing. The the biotech revelations. Uh, all of these things are just amazing. And I think there's the technology is moving so fast. We talked about what was it? Uh, what's the law? Oh, it's oh, it's going to escape me. Uh. What's the law of the doubling of technology with doubling of the number of transistors in the board? We talked about that at nausea a few weeks back. Anyway, it'll cut it. Moore's law. Moore law, thank you. Okay, you got the I'll okay, came back with it quickly. Yeah, I mean Moore's law and all these other things that are just happening um, are, are fascinating. I think that's gonna create new bull markets or at least many bull markets in IPO. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe we're still in a bull market at IPOs. And we'll, we're going to explore that a little further in just a couple minutes. And then the other thing is that a lot of times in IPOs, the reality never materializes. But so what? Okay? Like I say, we're trading sardines. We're not eating them. So the promise never materializes. But you have this big thrust on the promise, what I call the fly and the die, which I'll show you in a, in a slide one here. We've been talking about this forever. And so I got to thinking that at the least you're going to have these flies and dies where you have these initial the euphoria, and then it's going to die. And then the other thing I said was the best time to plant a tree. When's the best time to plant a tree? Well, 20 years ago, of course. The second best time to plant a tree is today. So if you could get up to speed on trading these IPOs and – the webinar is going to be on July 12th. If midnight, July 12th, we go into a bear market in IPOs, 
And then guess what? Somewhere down the line, there's going to be either another bull market in IPOs or at least there's going to be flies and dies, especially with the way that technology is moving as fast as it is. So I'm very excited about this. And I keep worrying a little bit that that bull market might end in IPOs, but the reason I was late this morning is because it's like, well, let me just see if there's a few out there I could show you. And it reached the reached point where I didn't have uh, – it was time to start the show. And so it wasn't like I had a few cherry-picked examples. I was finding example after example after example of stocks that have recently – take it off. And here's just a few of those ones. And this is, again, why I was late for the show. My apologies on that. And the beauty of these IPOs is, as I talked about last night in the stock selection webinar, is that if th there's only one hard and fast rule in technical analysis. If B is higher than A and C is higher than B, Let's say this is 5, this is 10, and this is 20. A market will have to pass through B on its way to C, okay? The beauty of IPOs is there are some really good, what I call pioneer patterns at B. Now, you're looking at this current chart, and you're thinking, hey, Dave, that looks like a stinker. Guess what it is? Every now and then... Or I should say quite often they just die. But the beauty of them is they're at A, they start at A, and then they go down to negative A. So you can avoid a lot of stinkers. But keep that ABC in mind. ABC, this one more than doubled. This one's had a pretty good run. Looks like it's ready to go again. That one's had a pretty good run. Not bad for an insurance company, 40%, 50%. This one ran up a couple hundred percent. Here's another one, up 60%, uh, 70%. Hey, another stinker, okay? Well, let's keep ABC in mind. Is it as easy as ABC? Well, not quite, but pretty darn close. Last night I said there's going to be some losses, and that's one thing I can guarantee. But it also went on to say that, let me set this up properly, but you know, if you want to guarantee – What's the old say? You want a guarantee? Go buy a toaster, right? Well, this is the closest thing. This ABC is the closest thing to the toaster trade that I have ever found after years of doing this, okay? I call it buy at B. No, it's not that, it's not that difficult, okay? But, it, but it's, it's not. There's a little bit more to it than that. I don't want to teach you too much. But notice what happens here. Bam, we had A. We had no B, we had no C, okay? Notice what happened here. Same sort of action, okay? So that's the beauty of it is that a lot of times they either fly or they die. And then sometimes they fly and die, which happens quite often. I'm using uh, old the old Wardens, uh, the old TC, Warden 7 or 12, whatever one's the older one, okay? Okay. Now, um, anyway, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about the IPOs, and I think it's, uh, it's going to be some really good stuff. And I've been doing really well trading these. Um, the great, one of the advantages, and, and I'm not going to bore you too much and go through too many details because we covered it in quite a big detail last night. And if you have time, I think you should go in and watch this uh, the webinar that we did last night. I've got a YouTube version of it right here. And there's a lot of good information in here, so I'm not going to re-harp on all this stuff over the next uh, few weeks. But there's a lot of good information in here. One of the things that I pointed out was that as a private trader, you have a huge advantage because you could go in and trade some of these thinner, more inefficient issues, okay? And... In doing that, you have a tremendous advantage over the big guys. Private individual traders don't have many advantages, but that's one small advantage that we do have is we could be a little bit more nimble and trade some of these more inefficient issues. So if you get a chance, do watch this video here. 
Um, the um, right now I've got an early bird special on this. It's going to go up a hundred bucks the week before, so that's just an FYI. And then I'm not going to pimp it too much more. Just the other thing too, those uh, if you're watching this chart show, the special offer is if you get the stock selection webinar, you get a year of the service and you get the IPO webinar free. Okay. All right, enough of the pimping. Now, the question is, do you short IPOs? The answer, the quick answer is no. Um, they're difficult to borrow, and that's one of the advantages of, the, of trading them. So the only people that could technically short an IPO would be insiders, okay? And the insiders have a vested interest of seeing it succeed. So that's why you initially have this pop in here. There's also some other things we talked about last night, like when the quiet period is up, what happens? Well, 100% of the time, the company is going to announce good news, okay? And if you got a little momentum under the stock to begin with, that's going to propel it higher. Now, the question is, do you short them? Well, you can't borrow them. And they do fly and die, so the obvious thing would to be to short them on the die phase, but they would have to be marginable, and it'd be hard, even if they were marginable, when they do become marginable, it will be very hard to borrow them, and they're pretty thin. And they're so, one of the things I'm going to really get into in a lot of details is they are risky, but with the risk comes reward. I mean, I just showed you a few some of which I've played, uh, that, that have run up like 100%. So that's a tremendous reward. Yes, they're risky. And yes, there's some risk. But you avoid a lot of them just by waiting for some simple patterns to occur. And then number two, you can catch a few nice little pops over a, a short period of time. And then the occasional outlier that really moves and makes it worthwhile. But you got to remember on the short side, in theory, your gains are limited. You can go to zero, okay, 100%. And your the amount you can lose is virtually unlimited. Now, you want to make sure that you're using protective stops and you get out the way, and eventually a broker would make you cash out uh, of an issue if it was, you know, eventually not unlimited losses, but maybe limited to the extent of your account, okay? So I would be I would cautious you against shorting them. Um, and, and one thing that, what advantage I have, we talked about this last night too, is that I'm a public figure in the trading world and I, I get to uh, create educational products. And in creating the educational products, I learn even more. So from a selfish standpoint, it's like I say every week, I come in and do these webinars and in the meantime, I'm learning something in the process too. So the one thing that I really learned doing all this research is that you do have this fly and the die as one of the patterns. So maybe that's fodder for additional research for possibly shorting them. But my quick answer right now is no, because you can't. And then two, even if you can, they're going to be hard to borrow. And then three, they're so risky. What could happen? Even if they do begin to die, I've identified some patterns where they could come back from the dead really strong. And that could uh, likely wipe you out. Uh, so I would I would encourage you not to short, but again, like I said, in doing all this research, it could be fodder for research or for future research because they do have a die characteristic to them because this is the promise and this is what we're gonna this is gonna be the bread and butter here the promise phase okay and then we want to get out somewhere trail that stop higher however it works out before they completely die we want to give them plenty of room but we want to get out before they completely die again we're trading the sardine. We're not going to eat it. We're not going to stick with it forever. Okay, so that's kind of a long-winded answer, saying be careful and don't. No, would you trade an IPO intraday when an IPO launches, such as GoPro, when it went live today, or do you wait for a certain number of days before trading? I wait for a certain number of days. I'm not going to tell you what that certain number of days is because the patterns are going to be pretty obvious once I do uh, GoPro. Let's take a look at GoPro.
But no, the what I'm looking for is a pop. I'm I'm not I'm not going for the pennies. Okay, I want a big move. And it's never enough. GoPro? Let's see if I can find that. Anybody got a symbol on that? I might not have it up on this feed yet. Yeah, Michael, um, I'm going to, uh, you actually, you're, you figured something out that I figured out too. That's going to be my, um, I have some scan set up that, that produces the IPOs. GPRO? GPRO. Well, I don't have it on this data feed. I'd have to check another feed. Um, I would avoid it. I think that, I think it's a bad idea. Um, yeah, it could be wild and crazy. Oh, it starts this afternoon. That's why I don't have it. Yeah, I, I just don't think it's a good idea uh, to do that. But, yeah, you might get a big pop in there. But then now you're, you're, you could end up chasing your own tail. You have no history to go off of other than intraday history. Now, it's not my way or highway. If, um, if you think there is some sort of, there are wide range bar, wide range bars on the opening day, obviously. So if you think you could come in and trade these wide range bars, of course this one failed miserably. That one failed miserably. This one, even though it's a hot IPO, it failed miserably. Okay. Uh, this one, hard to say. Uh, this one, not much range. So, I don't know. I I would much rather let I would much rather let them come public, wait for that X amount of days, and then look to make a trade. But I hear what you're saying. Every now and then, you might have one that opens here and then takes off. But I don't think it's going to be worth it longer term to do that. It has already started trading. Let me check another feed. G Pro. Pardon my back. <laughs> yeah, and that that could be that could be a die from the beginning. Um, interesting. Let's see if we can get a chart on that. Well, I'm not. It's not going to do you any good because I can't get it over the screen anyway. Yeah, it's at thirty-one twenty-six right now. I've got it. Oh, I have to close and then reopen TC. Okay, got you. All right, we could do that in a little bit. Or look at it one minute. GPRO. Yeah, it's not going to work until I restart it. Yeah, but I would avoid that. You know, now we're getting into the micro. We're we're trying to capture a big picture move, okay? So we're not worried about that. Generally, how deep do you let a pullback develop before iterating? Do you always follow the rules and layman's kiss my goodbye, TKO, et cetera, for pullbacks or exercise of discretion, case-by-case -case basis? Everything is always on a case-by-case -case basis, um, ZM. And you were in that stock selection webinar, correct? That's where we spent like 14 hours talking about how to pick the best stocks and leave the rest, okay? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's things that I just said like price, persistency, and acceleration of trend, and all these other things that you want in there. And then you take that TKO or that pullback on a case-by-case -case basis. If something goes straight up, then you could trade a much deeper pullback. If something's kind of sleepy like a REIT, then you don't have to, it doesn't have to pull back that much. You might trade shallower pullbacks. So, yeah, you got to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, and sometimes it will have, you know, his point is that sometimes you'll just get a little shadow of pullback and it'll take off. And, I, and I've seen that happen. Uh, quite often, but ideally you want a little bit deeper pullback because you do want that reversion to the mean move back in the direction of the trend. But sometimes if you get a TKO, if you get a TKO that recovers, let's say you got a TKO like this, and by the end of the day it's all the way back up there, you're not going to get that reversion to the mean move, but hopefully this shakeout down is enough. Okay, So it, it depends. And yes, sometimes you'll get shallow pullbacks to work, if we get into a rip-roaring bull market, then shallow pullbacks, sometimes that's all you get is shallow pullbacks. 
you get like a bunch of little flag patterns, which will kind of look like this. You just get like a little flag, and then it's like it'll take off again. And then you get a little flag, rinse and repeat. Um, I don't think we're in that kind of market right now, so I'm looking for deeper pullbacks. And you know, here's the thing: the methodology is not a perfect one. There are no perfect methodologies. So in some cases, I just let them go because they're not um, they're not deep enough. Okay. Um, T do somebody was looking at that a couple of days ago, and I didn't think the pullback was deep enough, and it took off. I mean, so that's it is what it is. The good news is there were breakout patterns way back here that would have worked on that one, but you could see didn't have much of a pullback, and then bam, it's already off to the races up to twenty percent. Okay, so it's not going to capture the methodology is not going to capture every move, although the ABC sure does have potential, at least in the IPOs. Okay. Dave, anything to discern where the IPO prices will go to where it was supposed to be? Yes. Like it opens on the lower side of the range, might that be more conducive to it popping? Um, I don't want to give away too much, Jonathan, but, yes, you're on to something, okay? Um, one of the things I'm going to cover is if it's, uh, you know, let's say it's priced here and it opens here, and I'm not going to tell you what this number is, but I have found a number. But I'll, I'm going to cover where if it's priced too high, it's prone to die. Okay, so if it's priced too high, especially if it gaps from that initial, this is before public offering, and this is after public offering. Offering, okay. And let's say it's supposed to come public at oh I don't know X, and it comes public at two times X. Okay, the the flippers are are pretty happy about that 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 got it back here. Okay, so it's like it's almost like you got to leave a little meat on the bone, and that's something I'm going to talk about in detail. I got to be careful because you, you guys are drawing me out, and you're you're getting all the information out. <laughs> but yeah, it's like um, it's like they got to leave a little meat on the bone for the people over here, and if they don't, then I think they just say screw it, and and they're out. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll get into all that. Okay. All right. Any questions before we hop into the overall charts? Okay. Let's do that. First, let's take a look at the overall market. And then we'll back things out a little bit. All right, let's take a look at the piece. Um, little, little frustrating in here because I, I, I maybe I got a little too um, flippant. I'm always picking on the candle people because the candle people, not all of them. I mean, I'm actually friends with a candle person, and and he'll tell you he's he actually went to Japan before before anyone that I know of that study candles and wrote about candles and uh, but he'll tell you flat out that you got to be careful of these very like a one bar pattern and all whereas a lot of other people they, they preach it like it's gospel like you have an outside day and I forget what they call it a baby with a poopy diaper or whatever like we had on Tuesday and that's the end of the world but notice that on Wednesday we reversed that almost completely and today is looking a little bit ominous in here so you have to take things one day at a time. And yesterday was a really good day. Day before, not so good. Today, not so good. And as the days string together, then of course you start drawing your lines and your arrows. And you know, my only concern now is that the peas haven't made for much forward progress in how long? Um, about 20 calendar days. So that would be about. Uh, three weeks of trading. So that's a little bit concerning, but like I wrote a column this morning, see the forest for the trees. We had this horrible, horrible chop, 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 and then we broke out of it. And so far, so good, although we are on our net, net basis. Never forget to look back in time, net, net, 
and see where we are. But we're not that far from all-time highs. And at all-time highs, all alongs at least are happy. So that's a good thing. Now, NASDAQ did that outside day down, too. And then yesterday closed at 14-year highs. And it's given it up a little bit today, but the good thing is it's already off its worst levels. So that means, and I've been seeing this quite a bit lately, if you've been watching this market closely, which I recommend you don't, but I do kind of keep an eye on things sometimes, a little more closely than I should or a little more closely than I preach at least. But it seems like the sell-offs are met with buyers, and the market begins to dip a little bit and buyers come in, and we have time. Let's maybe see if we can see that on a micro basis in the NASDAQ. Yeah, you see you got a pretty big sell-off. And then now it's kind of clawing its way back higher. That's a five-minute chart. So it seems like the buyers are stepping up to the plate, at least for now. Now, my concern with the NASDAQ is that it is kind of stalling at this prior little peak in here back in March. So I want to see it take that out with vigor and not look back for a while. Now, since we have a little time today, let's do this. Let's go back. Let's take a look at like a monthly chart and back the chart way, way out. You can see that. Obviously, we had that peak at 5,000. I've got a picture of my daughter in here. Uh, let me find it. 504.686. NASDAQ was 149 points. I can't see it with the glare from here. And that's when my daughter was born, right at the absolute peak of the market. <laughs> Uh, anyway, right there. And you can see that we're, we're not quite there, but we're at around 14-year highs. And on a monthly chart, you draw your arrow, it's looking pretty good so far. So kind of a forest for the trees type of analysis. My only concern, again, is that this shorter-term possible double top in here. I'd like to see it bust out of that with vigor. Sometimes one thing that is a little concerning is when it kind of make it like a V-shaped recovery at the high levels. By the time it gets all the way back to the old highs, it's a little bit overbought to begin with. So if you have to worry about something, it's certainly something to uh, worry about. Um, the Speaking of worry, take a look at the EFA shares. A little bit concerned about what's happening there. I haven't had time to dig into it as fully as I want to. So if anybody knows what's going on with the EFA shares, let me know. But that's a pretty big spanking for those guys. And the, the they were really hanging in there a couple of days ago. This is, um, I think it's Europe and Far East is what they call it, Europe, Far East, Asia. It's everything except North America, South America for the most part. It's, it's the, the major markets of the world, uh, international markets outside of U.S. So... That's one thing to be a little concerned about. Gold's been doing pretty good in here. That's the commodity. Let's take a look at the stock. And I haven't um, updated this for today's charts. Again, I was kind of a little scrambling to get everything uh, up and running. But this low here is just above a major, major, major low. And notice you've got a bow tie here, okay? Anytime you get a bow tie off a major, major low, it's worth paying attention, okay? Now, we had that happen back around December, and what did we do? Well, we played some stocks, and we caught this leg out, which was pretty nice. Okay, then it bow tied back down. Now, I'm not a big fan of playing a bow tie to the downside from these low levels, because if you back the chart way, way out, you know, right here is low level. This bow tie here is a high level bow tie. That's one you want to be trading. You don't want to be trading a short way down here. You do want to consider some longs. And what do we have, a potential head and shoulders bottom, potential triple bottom? I would never buy a head and shoulders bottom or a triple bottom or a double bottom or any of these other classical patterns. But what I would do is I would watch for a bow tie or some other sort of transitional pattern when that occurs. And when that happens, you have that big picture pattern Behind you, it can make it can make for some really nice trades. As I put the newsletter this morning, I think we got a leg, a new leg in gold and silver for that matter too. Take a look at the bow tie there, coming off of all time lows maybe. Let's see, pretty much all time lows. Of course, my teenager is no longer a teenager, but that used to be like 
You ever ask a teenager something? Are you going out tonight? Pretty much. Okay. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, a lot of technology hanging there. Drugs came back strong in here today, notwithstanding. We don't have it today's data in here. Uh, simis have been doing pretty good. Uh, drugs are short of their old highs, as is biotech. But in general, they have been improving. Pretty much anything technology-related. Internet also has been doing pretty good in here as of late. Okay. And utilities up towards new highs. Semiconductors, bullish there. Kind of had a bit of a knockout type of move. A little funky because it made new highs where it came back in. But for the most part, today notwithstanding, these areas are hanging in there. And we'll look at some of the micro here in just one second. But, again, most areas looking pretty good. A couple areas a little questionable. The um, defense stocks, not defensive stocks, but defense Stocks such as the aerospace and the um, defense. Here we go, right here. Looking a little questionable in here. About to make a bow tie off of all time high. So that's a little questionable yet here. Uh, retail has been just kind of chopping around and looking kind of ugly. So let's take a look at that real quick. And. I wouldn't rush out and go crazy bearish on them, but they certainly, they're certainly not doing well. And it looks like they're kind of rolling back over in here. But for the most part, though, EFA aside, retail aside, defense aside, most stocks in most areas are looking pretty good. In some areas, like energies, are looking especially good in here. So, so far, so good. Market's kind of hanging in there. Today, notwithstanding, but again, let's take it on a day-by-day -day basis. Dave, a lot of experts give credits to end-of-quarter window dressing. Does this play any strategy? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because who cares? Um, they're just, what are they doing? They just put in some, some high momentum stocks to make themselves look better. Um, I think if you start factoring in too many abstract details into your analysis, um, I think it could, it could begin to uh, stress you out. I think you can end up with a bit of analysis paralysis. Um, you know, it's fun to talk about some of these things. And even some of the more quantifiable things, like short interest. Well, damn, it's got a huge short interest. We should never short that. Oh, I don't know. I mean, how do you know that, that those shorts aren't hedged with puts? And it's like, and then you look at the put call ratio. And then you look at, before you know it, you're forgetting about the chart. So just follow the charts. Once you're in, you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound, you trail a stop higher if you're blessed with a profit. And if you're not, you just get stopped out and you move on. Like a bus, there's going to be another one, another sardine will swim by soon, okay? So, yeah, Jonathan, don't worry about window dressing or whatever they're calling it. And then they're all, there's always going to be a name for it, okay? It's always a... Window dressing, and then maybe one day it's because oil spiked. And then oil spikes again, and the market goes the opposite way. Well, they'll find another reason to claim why the market moved like it is. So I'd ignore all news, ignore all, here we go, ignore all news, ignore all noise, and your life's going to get a lot better. All right, uh, I don't have much else to cover sector-wise, unless there's something you want me to point out. Uh, a lot of areas in general, like biotech improving, technology in general improving. Things are kind of shaping up. Uh, financials overall still looking pretty good. Transports are kind of back to their old highs in here. Uh, they're a little questionable, but longer term trends still intact, in, in okay? Dave, on IPOs, you're saying if it goes up, buy it, but if it don't, if it does not go up, don't. Well, last night we talked about this. Um, it's not quite that easy, but it's the closest thing to that that I've seen. So last night, let me see if I can find a slide on this. The point I was making last night, and 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 you could you've got the. Um, you got the video on my website, so go in and watch it, and you'll you'll get an idea of how it works. Oh, by the way, this was in last night's video. This is on the wall of my office. Sardine Drive. <laughs> 
And I talked about that last night, too. It's like it's good to have some sort of symbolism to keep you grounded, to keep you um, uh, to make sure you're, you understand what you're doing. You're trading, okay? You're not necessarily investing, although you should stay with positions as long as you can. So I'm just trying to think of the slides I wanted to pull up here. Uh, I'm not saying you should blindly buy it. B, there's a little bit more to it than that, okay, which I can't give away everything. Um, but here's the deal. The only thing that I'm not covering a lot of um, is that the core methodology works really well with IPOs. So uh, it's not like I'm holding back on you. The only thing that is is – the, that you need to know is that there are some pioneer patterns that do allow you to buy at B. And in fact, one of them I'm actually calling buy at B. So when it does that, when it does that ABC, you're looking to get in somewhere at B. Okay, I don't want to give it completely away. So you got the ABC pattern, and it's not exactly, it doesn't shape up exactly like this, but if you go out and study IPOs, you're going to find that, of course, the fly and die is very common, but during this fly phase, there's a chance to get in at B, and a lot of times they just die, and they never get to B, okay? Okay, now B is not this huge secret, but you get the idea of what I'm doing there, okay? It's breakout in nature. But yeah, oh, I know what I was looking for, the Will Rogers quote, which is in here somewhere. And we talked about that last night. Yeah, so just, just watch, the, uh, watch the video. Uh, don't operate heavy machinery after viewing. <laughs> but yeah, the Will Rogers said... Um, Buy stocks that go up. They don't go up. Don't buy them. Well, this is the closest thing that I've seen to that in IPOs. B12 has live MG120. Oh, okay. You guys got to push me over to that V12, right? Ugh. I hate upgrading software. You could you could have my software when you pry it from my cold dark hands. All right, let's open it up for individual issues. We should. We should do Ford or Don. Uh, if you don't mind, when you're asking about individual stops, stocks, hey, Mormon, um, just ask about one at a time. Apple, you know, Apple is the thickest stock in thick town, although it does make some inefficient moves at times, okay? Um, I would avoid it. If, you, if you're trading a pullback, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 days of the pullback. Notice that your bow tie moving averages are beginning to roll over here, okay? And it is stalling short of the prior high. They just split this thing, what, 6 for 1, 10 for 1, 100 to 1, 50 to 1, something stupid. 7 for 1, 6 for 1, anybody remember what it was? Oh, I guess it could show an unsplit, right? So it was a lot to one, six or seven to one. It was at 600, now it's at 100. So yeah, I told you Apple was going to 100. Okay. But now it's, it's they've taken this thick stock and they've made it seven to one. Thank you, Richard and Howard. So now it's even, the volume is going up even more. Because I guess they tried to make it accessible to, to the small traders. Um, but it's too many days in the pullback. So it's just losing some steam in here. And you see it's not, it's it's almost coming back to its prior little little breakout level. So I would leave it alone. That that the nail in the coffin here could have been that my my gut going into the split was that that's gonna be the nail in the coffin. Okay. Okay, the answer is buy at B and AMPH. No, not enough trading days. But 
Keep thinking, keep looking. The webinar is cheap. You could just come and I'll tell you exactly what to do. And the beauty of buy at D, it's somewhat, it's the most mechanical thing I've done, at least in 20 years. Um, and it's working out pretty good so far, knock on wood. All right, any uh, quiet bunch today? Any more stocks? I know you got a bunch of them. Here we go. Ah, y'all got to do this. Y'all got to gotta beat me up, huh? LPG. LPG, buy at B. LPG. Uh, no, the buy at B would have been um, would have been a long time ago. Would have been three or four points ago on that one. Okay, but next pullback, baby. It's it's a pretty good rally here. So maybe on the next pullback. See, that's where you go from your primary signal to your secondary signals. And like I said, I showed last night. Let's take a look at like. Um, let's see if I can find it. Um, So you're going to look for secondary signals, okay? Let me find you another example. Um, let's say in, in, in R, you buy at B at, at RLYP would have been, um, let's just say, back here somewhere, okay? Now, if you missed that Pioneer signal, which was a pretty good one, by the way, then you had pullbacks along the way. So these secondary signals can still be pretty good. In fact, if the market, the overall stock market gets a little iffy, if you're finding that you're not making a lot of money, not printing money like we have been lately buying at B, then you back off a little bit and you take these secondary signals. You take something like the first pullback. And there's a couple other things to look for too. But you take those secondary signals that are more in line with the core methodology, okay? RDUS, okay? Uh, yep, you would be long from buy and B, but now you'd be looking for a secondary signal. So it would have to pull back or, or skyrocket higher and then pull back. Might be a little thin, we'll have to do it. Please define a pioneer entry. No, <laughs> no, come to the webinar. That's my teaser. I gave away a lot last night, so watch that, and you'll probably figure out what I'm talking about. Okay? All right. <laughs> the ZM's already signed up, so he's laughing. It's cheap. It's cheap. Too cheap. That's when I should have made it more. All right. Next stock, anybody? Quite a bunch today. No stocks for Dave. Well, the one day we don't have Don, so let's just look at Ford anyway. Let's pretend he's here. Oh, Don, why'd you bring up Ford? Ugh, look at this thing. It's it's Look at this overhead supply in here. It's just horrible. It just chops all over the place. <laughs> yeah, GLEP, yeah, that looks pretty good. The only problem with that one, John, is um, is it, it's uh, it's very volatile. It's, it's already... You already had your buy at B, okay? So it's already ran up a pretty good bit. But, yeah, it looks pretty good, and it is a TKO, and that, that is on my list for today. I probably should not have uh, shown you that one, but I did. See, I'm easy. Throw you a bone. Yeah, I like it. All right, GLOPT, absolutely. Code. Code. C-O-D. Yeah, code looks pretty good. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. It's well way back here. It's got a possible prior peak, but shorter term, I think it looks pretty good. Um, you know, everything. I, it's like here's the deal: where I can't pick it apart too much because what do I preach? Acceleration. Well, what does it have? Acceleration. What do I preach? Persistency. What does it have? Persistency. Okay. And then what do you do? Well, you wait for a pullback. Um, Ideally, a little bit deeper pullback would be nice. It is slightly on the low side as far as historical volatility is concerned, but it's not bad. So ideally, I'd like a little bit more of a pullback, maybe another half a point to a point in this particular case, but maybe I'm looking for too much perfection. So I'm going to stop short. I'll give you a high five on that one. Oh, that's, that's my buddy. I know who that is. Alvin, you got a good eye.
Okay. I'm, you know what? I'll give you a high five. High five. Goal for Mr. Phil. Um, what I would prefer doing right now, we're long A at V, as you know. Okay. And as I showed you earlier, gold stocks overall, I'm liking these gold stocks that are down here at these low levels. Okay. That look like that. That have kind of bottomed out. Kind of all the bad memories have washed their way through the system. I'm waving my arms like I'm like I'm waving those bad memories by. Somebody's looking in my office probably thinks it's I'm doing something else in here. Um, but coming off of these all-time lows or decade-plus lows and then thrusting higher, I'm then pulling back a little bit. By the way, that's set up still. Okay, so if you missed the initial trade, then it's still set up. Still looks pretty good here. You got a bow tie coming off of all-time lows. Sometimes those can make for great trading and trending patterns. Last time it did it was back here. We got it here. We caught a little ride out. Wasn't the biggest trade in the world, but it was better than poking the eye. Okay, NG did a similar pattern. Okay, NG. Okay, yeah, Howard, we're going we're gonna to come back to that with film. Okay, yeah, NG did a similar pattern, except that it sort of, um, it sort of hung around higher levels after it ran up. Okay. All right. So Phil wants to take a look at gold. So I think if you're going to trade gold stocks, find the ones that are at lower levels. Now, this one's at fairly low levels, but it's had a pretty good run. And what was the lows in here? Let's just see what that was. So it was way down. Yeah, it's already ran up substantially in here. I would find the, the lower tiered ones. Like, take a look at GDXJ. And that's set up at low levels. Okay, that gets you in those lower tiered, more speculative type of issues. And look how beautiful that is. There's your bow tie. This is how you're going to pay for today's webinar, which is free, by the way. Okay, you're going to, you're going to look at something like GDXJ, making a bow tie off of major, major lows. You've got a big old head and shoulders bottom in here, sort of, and then you got a bow tie coming off of that. Okay, so yeah, I'm bullish on gold, in case you're wondering. P.S. It's quiet because the U.S. soccer team plays at noon. Ah, okay. Well, good. I thought it was me. A-U-I then. All right, Phil. I love Phil. <laughs> he says, no problem. Yes, yes. It has some bad memories, but it's a gold stock. They're all going to probably have some bad memories. So, yes, absolutely. And I know what you're doing there, Phil. Watch this. I'm going to put the 50-day moving average in. I know how he trades. Watch this. He, I know what he's doing. Watch this. Let's get that 50 in there. I bet it's going to, oh, not quite. Okay. Phil likes to trade to bounce off the 50. But uh, that looks good. Absolutely. You know, high five. High five to Phil. Good job, Phil. Yeah, forget about goal, though. GTLS for Mr. Gary. Gary, good to see you back. Gary gave up on me earlier today and left me. Um... I prefer if it were coming off of major, major lows. It's coming off of multi-year lows, but lately I've been more of a stickler for incredible lows, okay? It's not bad. I, I can't really fault you on that, Gary. I think it's good. It's got a bow tie. It's cutting through that 50. It's pulled back. I'm going to give it an okay. I would just prefer if it were coming off of, like, if it looked like A and V, you know, coming off of that, when you back the chart way, way out, it's like coming off these major, 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 major lows, okay? Do you have any value particular indicates indicators like ADX or stochastics? I'm not sure what that what those are. ADX? Stochastics? Don't, never heard of them. Now, early, early on, I did, I was kind of forced to quantify some of my research. So in the first book, um, I inadvertently mentioned ADX too much, which I was using for scanning purposes, but I was also still looking at a lot of charts. Um, I've since really distanced myself from ADX just because it has a lot of lag to it. It has a lot of um, characteristics I'm not a big fan of. Uh, it's funny, like stochastics. I don't use stochastics, and somebody will email me and ask me about them. And I'll say, and I'll ask, well, what's a stochastic? And they'll send me about a four-page diatribe on what stochastics are. And that's kind of cruel and unusual for me to do that. And cruel and unusual punishment. So I don't. I just tell everybody I don't use it because I don't. 
Uh, but it's not my way or the highway. It depends on how you use an indicator. If uh, years ago I had what I called like a, um, I was experimenting with the 310 oscillator, which Linda Rasky is a big fan of, at least she used to be. And uh, I was doing things like counting the ups and counting the downs and all. And so if you say do stochastics work, well, first of all, all indicators have lag. And my feeling is that they're just going to tell you what's already in price anyway. So why not study price first and foremost instead of study a derivative price? Now, with that said, it all depends on how you use it. Like Greg Morse says in his book, um, his new book, Investing with the Trend, which I recommend you read. It's on my website. It's a good book. It's it's a, encyclopedic and it's just huge, um, but it depends on how you use it. So can I? I could say, okay, uh, sell at eighty, buy at twenty stochastics. No, that'll never work. Okay, it's like Pinocchio. Everybody knows that, right? But if you find some sort of way to use stochastic where it confirms what's going on, momentum or something, then by all means, knock yourself out. My only other problem with stochastic is, and I don't mean to go off on a rant on indicators, is be darn careful with any bound indicator. Now, some people are just the opposite and tell you uh, if it's unbound, it's a bad thing. But let me show you something real quick. We can find a slide here. Okay, stochastic is a bound indicator. So... That means that it has a low and it has a high. Stochastic goes from 0 to 100. Okay. So what happens when it gets to 100? Okay, what happens when it gets to 0? Okay. So this looks like, if you use this to predict the market, which is up here somewhere, you're like, oh, look at that. It's gone sideways. It's topped out. Well, Maybe it has, but that doesn't mean the market can't keep going, okay? So be very careful with anything that's bound like a stochastic, okay? Moving average lag, but will show trade clearly if not in range. Absolutely, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of moving averages. I always have to stop myself short. Not a huge fan of indicators, but, yeah, it, what's kind of shocking is um, just like using a moving average, and let me just let me clean this chart up. What's pretty amazing is let's just put in like a 20 day exponential. Uh, years ago, I wrote in Stocks and Commodities 1995, I think. I wrote about a system just using a 20 day moving average. So let's just put a 20 day moving average in here. Okay, now it's going to have some lag, don't get me wrong, but this is the energy stocks. And you can see, look at the daylight. Okay, they came in, kissed the moving average a little bit. Look at the daylight. Just a little kiss of moving average, nothing to worry about. Look at the daylight, okay, being in lows or greater than moving average. A little kiss of the moving average, and look at the daylight again, okay? And then once again, a little, almost a kiss of the moving average. Now, I'll see people in presentations show you some sort of oscillator system that's in and out of this market 100 times, and I'm thinking, well, shoot, just stick with the daylight, and if you don't have any daylight below the moving average, stay long. So you stayed long for the most part from February to June. You'd still be long today. So, yeah, moving averages have their purposes, but when the market's in a, in a consolidation going sideways, they don't work so well. Let's take a look at the P's, okay? They don't work so well in inefficient markets. S&P 500, very inefficient market, okay? So while they chopped around, you could see you didn't have much daylight, Okay. You had a little daylight in the 10, and then you had a little daylight here, and a little daylight below, a little daylight above. Okay, it's not until the trade got started moving until you got some pretty serious daylight working within that moving average. Okay? So, yeah, they have their purposes. Michael, I agree with you. He says above 50 uptrend, below 50 downtrend, has a general rule, and he has general all in caps. Absolutely. Yeah, as a general rule, sure. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I've done a lot of consulting throughout my career, and then if somebody had a system that didn't work on the short side, what would we do? we put a moving average in, okay, and only take trades below the moving average. Well, that weeded out a lot of uptrending markets. 
So that one little trick right there, not that it was being disingenuous, it was just kind of like, okay, well, let's this thing obviously doesn't work in ruin, rip roaring bull markets, so let's put a trend filter in. And the simplest of all simple trend filters is above and below the moving average. Now, I wouldn't buy when it goes above and sell when it goes below, but as a general rule, look at that 50-day moving average or the 10-day sale board, 20-day exponential, 30-day exponential, the bow type moving averages, and see where the market is relative to those moving averages, see which direction those moving averages are pointed, and also see if there's some daylight. And if, by all means, realize there's going to be some lag, okay? But, yeah, look at the 50, okay? Daylight would have kept you long through that leg there. You'd have been long here. That wasn't so great. You'd have stayed long throughout here, okay? Watch. Let's clean this chart up a little bit and add a 50 in, okay? So if all you did was trade daylight on the 50, meaning that you had to have, the market had to be above its 50-day moving average, okay? You'd have stayed long from here all the way to here. I don't know. Can you survive a kiss? I think you can all the way to here. Maybe you get out here, okay? And then you're back in here through this leg here. Maybe you get out there. Who knows? Okay. And then look at this big leg here, big leg here, or some with big leg, and now you got another leg here. So for the most part, following that daylight will help to keep you on the right side of the market. I would not trade that mechanically, but if you go back and look throughout history, you're going to be pretty amazed at you might stay in for a year. This kept you in for was that about a year? Just the daylight kept you in the market nine, seven, uh, let's say ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, about uh, six months, eight months. Okay. But just use them to help you see what's already going on in the chart. Okay. How many days on the pullback is too many days for the setup? Um, it depends. Okay. But usually after seven or eight days, I begin to question a pullback. In IPOs, I'm a little bit more lenient. Like I said last night, I kind of bend the rules a little bit. You can wait for a few more days, especially if you had a big thrust higher, that RLY. Or L Y P P or L or L Y P or L Y P whatever that stock was we just looked at earlier had about a 13-day pullback. Okay, G Pro is all over the place. Yes, it is. N S P H. No, not yet at least. Let's see. No, you got too much. It's 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 too speculative, and then you've got. Um, you got a mountain of overhead supply on that one, so I would leave it alone. I know it's a ways above it, but yeah, it's just no, leave that alone. EDAP. Uh, kind of wide and loose longer term, a little bit on the thin side. I think I'd pass. I don't like the prior peak in here, and it's kind of wide and loose. I hear you, though. It's starting to take off, but uh, I think I'd pass on that one. HK, should I wait for a longer pullback? All right, let's take a look at that. H, HK. Um, this is uh, oil field related. Well, you did have a TKO kind of move. Um, let's see if we can clean this chart up. It's okay. Uh, you had a pretty good move in here. Let's see. Let's just do some trend line stuff. It did accelerate higher a little bit. You've got a double top knockout, okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yeah, I would have preferred if this would have came down a little bit further in here. But that's a double top knockout. That looks pretty good. I'll stop short of a high five because it could be a little deeper. You're right. You're answering your own question. R-O-Y-L or O-Y-L. Uh, no, you see it kind of like took off in here. I call it a bottle rocket. But then it came all the way back in, and then it's just all over the place. Draw a sideways line in there, so leave that alone. CO? CO? Um, well, it's kind of all over the place. It's too thin. It's really, really thin. Uh, 96,000 on average shares. Um, so I would leave that one alone. Well, look at the Chinese stock I recommended for today if you want something Chinese. GPL, that's going to be Great Panther Silver, I think. GPL, how do I know that? Hmm, how does Dave know that? Uh, no, it's kind of, um, it's, it, I don't like the way it's kind of like towards its second peak in here. Uh, it would have to break out above here for me to get excited. 
does have some longer term bad memories. Take a look at um, silver stocks overall, though. Let's let's see. You know what? We got time. Let's find you something better. Let's see what we could find. Maybe not better for you, but just something that I like better. Let's see. AG, for instance. There you go. We don't have to go any further than that. Okay. Let's see. What kind of low are we make? Make an all time low, multi year low. Let's take a look at a monthly. Well, it's his lowest level since 2012. Maybe we could find something at lower levels. But AG, that looks pretty good. Uh, CDE has some overhead. So let's see if we could find something a little bit better. I like that AG, I tell you. Yeah, the AG looks pretty good. I'd like to see it at further lows than, than it is, but good enough. Yeah, so find something that's come off at of low levels, forming that bow tie, kind of like A&V and whatever one that Phil pointed out a few minutes ago. Okay, Wynn wants to know about T-W-O-U, T-W-O-U. Oh, there it is. Um, it's a relatively new issue. I'd like to see a little bit more breakout in this one now. Let's see something here. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, 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 I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. Yeah, it's triggering a breakout pattern here, but it hasn't followed through from that, okay? So if you bought the breakout, that's fine. Um, nothing's jumping out at me for a new position, though, other than it recently triggered a breakout. Uh, somebody want to know about LPG. Did we talk about that one already? Was it LPG? We'll get back to that one. E and Z? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, it's got some longer term bad issues, well, bad issues, bad memories, but it looks pretty good shorter term. You know, my only concern here is that it's sort of pulled back to its prior pullback. That's one of the things I kind of look for. It looks okay. I don't like the fact that it pulled back to its prior pullback, okay? Sina, long term low, getting ready for bow tie. For Mr. Howard, Sina. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's not there yet, but it's not. Well, it's it's at multi-year lows, but it could be lower. Okay. Um, I could see it's making a. I could see it's kind of bottoming out though, but wait for the signal. Okay, it's a little too early in the signal. NSPH. We talked about that one already, Howard. Uh. Yeah, I think we talked about that one. I mean, I hear you. It's turning around, but it's got a mountain overhead resistance to go through. I-S-I-L for Mr. Alvin. I-S-I-L. Um, not bad. It's had a pretty good run. I'm going to give that one a not bad. It's like I like a little bit more pullback, but if you had too much more, it would hit the um, prior little support in here. Uh, not bad. <laughs> Pretty good. How's that? VTG. VTG. You can run V7 and V12 at the same time. Same CPU, or different CPUs. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna. I've got a new computer here, and I'm. I'm getting ready to buy yet another new computer here to run these six monitors. Um, I'm just gonna have to break down and get it running. I, I hear you. Uh, this one's all over the place. It's um. It's kind of a penny stock. Not that I would never trade a stock at its one or two dollars a share. It's just that it doesn't have much structure. It's kind of all over the place. So I would leave that alone. Sina has target estimate by brokers. Oh God! See, that's the problem. They're they're mucking you up, man. You don't want these brokers in there telling you what's going on and what's happening. So. M N G A M N G A. I'm getting like a hundred Skype messages right now. M N G A. I don't know what's going on. 
Uh, no, this is just, is that the symbol right? It's just all over the place. Yeah, it's too dangerous. It's, it's no structure there. Be careful with that. Long SYPR not working type stop. SYPR. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not a new setup because you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You've got about 16 days, almost a month's worth of trading since it's made a new high. It's a pretty thin issue. you got the prior peak in here. It's just kind of all over the place. So I hear you shorter term if you're long, but uh, just make sure you have a stop in place. Okay, AG. Okay, and the question for ZM is, does the range of 11 and 12 of AG consider significant resistance? Now, keep in mind, I am somewhat more lenient when it comes to these commodity-related stocks, especially gold. And so ZM is correct to identify that that it is a little overhead resistance right here, but no, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, I like the bow tie off of these major lows in here, especially after a couple of probes down to those lows. Um, I think if this thing gets going, it could take out that little bit of resistance like butter. But good eye for seeing that, by the way. ZM's got a good eye. T-E-V-D-Y. <laughs> Uh, we talked about this one. Well, it's pulled back to its prior breakout in here, so I would leave that alone because it's pulled back to its prior breakout. Okay. CRDC. Did we look at that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of an electrocardiogram, so I would leave that one alone. There's just no structure to this one. It just you know bounces all over the place. You know, it's 120, 120, 120, you know, it looks like it just oscillates through 120. So here's your system. Sell it when it goes below 120, buy it when it goes above. <laughs> Remember, I'm joking. How about NG at this picture, at this juncture? NG. Uh, no, I like the other goals a little better. I like the ones that are first leg in nature, like A and V, for instance. Um, NG, it's, eh, it's just kind of already started its... And it's kind of wide and loose. PES. <laughs> Long PES stop at 20 during your show on pullback. So you just took a trade? How is a crazy man. Stop at 20 EMA. Yeah, that 20 is a little tight on the EMA. I hear you, but that's a little tight for a stop. Uh, I think noise alone could get you on that stop. I'm not seeing a setup here, but I, I do I do have this one, I think, in a momentum list because I remember the name Pioneer. Let me see if it's in my Landry 100. It just kind of goes up. It's, it's a cool stock because it just kind of goes up. Maybe it's just one of those ones you buy and forget about. Landry 100. What was that stock? Pioneer? P. Yeah, there it is right there, PES. Let's see how long we've had it in here. Yeah, so it might not, not everything perfectly fits the methodology, as you can imagine. But in keeping a momentum list, which is a good idea, I would recommend you do that. Let's just see where it is. Yeah, 18%, 46 days. So it's been in since April 22nd. What happened on April 22nd? It probably was breaking out the new highs. 22nd. Right there. Yeah, as it hit new highs, it went into the list. It's had a pretty good run since. Bought at 1440. Oh, well, kudos to you. Just, yeah, it's set up, you know, if, you, if you're trend following mode, then just relax and don't have such a tight stop, okay? In fact, look at the stock. I mean, look at the 30 day moving average. It has not touched the 30-day moving average. Well, it maybe just for lunch one day it did it and on the 15th. But for all intents and purposes, since uh, February, and where are we now? March, April, May, June, almost July. You know, five months with barely even touching that 30-day moving average. See, there you go. There's your testament to using a moving average to help keep in the right side of the market. 
going to have some lag. Okay, but well, the good thing about exponentials is that they will come, catch up with the trend quicker. And I learned this from Greg Morris is when the stock goes below the 30, the 30 automatically changes or within a day or so. So they will turn down quickly and catch up. Okay. TRNX for Mr. John. TRNX. Uh, it might need a little more pullback. It's kind of wide and loose longer term. Uh, shorter term could use a little more pullback. It's just not jumping out at me. It doesn't have it doesn't have as much momentum as it might appear. This run here, okay, you got to measure from the top of this high here to here. That's only like a point and a half, maybe two point run. Um, I think I would pass on that one. TSO for Mr. Phil. TSO. No, because it gapped. It, now this is too much of a gap. Even though earlier I said I don't mind a little gap in an oil stock, that's a little too much of a gap, okay? A lot of people want it out badly on that. And then that's where you draw your sideways line in, and you see that it's just right towards these prior peak in here. So I would leave that alone. I know you do things a little differently than me, Phil, but, hey, that's what makes the market. And, see, Phil's on my service, too. He likes the way I do things, and I like the way he does certain things, too. And then we, just, we agree to disagree on some stuff, so that's what makes the market. AUI, yes. Oh, we already talked about that one. Absolutely. Uh, NG, TGTX, looks like a buy. TGTX. TGTX. It's so funny. I'm beginning to learn the personality of you guys through the through your stock picks. It's kind of cool. Uh, this looked a little better back here. Uh, now it really didn't clear. It needs a, it's just one day past the prior peak in here. I like them to clear that prior peak decisively, so I'd, prefer if it would have done this and then come back in. Now it's kind of stalled at its prior peak. I would leave that one alone for now. But if you're already long, stay long. It looks pretty good. Look at that bow tie back here. I feel like I'm tiny Elvis. Well, it wasn't off all-time lows, but, yeah, it's, I wouldn't get that excited. And the other refiners. It was... It was White House BS on TSO. See, I don't, I don't pay attention to any news, and I got, I get into these heated arguments with people all the time. You know, how could you not listen to the news? Because it could affect my judgment. Okay, and I have a family to support, and I have to figure out where markets are headed in order to support my family. Okay. Well, if I'm listening to the news and you just said BS from the White House, so. You, you're saying your opinion is that's BS from the White House, and maybe it is. And that has aggravated you. And now when you look at that chart, you're not seeing a gap up, a gap down. You're seeing BS from the White House. And I'm guessing you don't like, you don't like what's going on in the White House. Now you're aggravated about the White House. You're looking at the chart, you're aggravated. Well, are you seeing that chart clearly now? I bet you're not. It's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Trade the chart, not opinion. Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, I got the little choir with me today. I love you guys. News is two-thirds or more bad, yet the market goes up two-thirds of the time. So it will mislead you. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. Should we? Uh, I'm tough. Yeah, and yeah, you know, I I I got in a heated debate with someone a couple days ago, and um, then shamed him in as a family member. It's like I thought I'd be cool and say, "Hey, listen, to this I I trade in such a vacuum. I didn't know who Yellen was, and and all of a sudden that led to like talking about the news and what little I knew about the news, and boy, I just escalated and got really ugly fast. And it's like. Once again, you don't understand. If I get caught up in the news, it's going to cloud my judgment. It's going to mess me up, okay? Now, if I'm a journalist, I should know all the news, okay? And I just report the news. But in this line of business, it's it's noise, and it's, it's just going to mess you up. It really is, okay? TRNX. Could use a little bit deeper pullback. 
It is wide and loose longer term. Now, personalities can change, but I would probably pass on this one based on the longer term personality. Oh, we're also, we already talked about this one too. Plus, this leg here is not as big as it seems. Okay. When news is good, watch for a top. When news is bad, look for bases. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Michael says, I'm fine as I am. Red F? Red F is kind of all over the place. That's going to be one of those Indian stocks. I think it's in one of my lists. Yeah, it's actually in my momentum list here, which um, had I known you guys would be looking at my momentum list, I would have window dressed it today and I'd have taken it out. <laughs> um, but it still looks like it has potential in here. Let's back this chart out a little. It's kind of wide and loose and crazy, but it does look like it has potential. But it's so it's like I gotta I gotta weigh that with the caveat. Uh, yeah. Yes or no? Yes, but it's crazy. Okay, so be prepared for a wild ride. Look at the HV ninety eight. That's pretty high. Pretty dangerous stock. R U N G U N G U N G. Uh, no, if anything, it looks like natural gas is breaking down. Let's take a look at, like, boil. Uh, you know, it's just, there's no structure there. I think everybody's looking for the mother of all bottoms in natural gas. And when it does occur, it's going to be incredible, but it, it just has occurred. It's maybe like a monthly chart. But, you know, keep an eye on it. Maybe next year, maybe the year after. Is a seven-day pullback the same as a seven-week pullback on a weekly chart? Absolutely. Patterns are fractal, okay? So a bow tie on a daily is the same as a bow tie on a five-minute. You're looking for the same exact things, okay? Uh, or a weekly or a monthly chart. And I often show the – I go back to, um, what is it, 1999 or even before, 1995, and we look at all the bull markets and bear markets since, and we look at, the, we look at bow ties on a weekly basis and the week you got a weekly bow tie at the end and possibly just the beginning of 2008 down which is pretty amazing you got one up at the bottom of 2002 2003 it took two years for that market to bottom and it also took two years for that bow tie to form okay all right we're going to squeeze in just a couple because we uh we were late mnga MNGA. No, we covered that one, didn't we? See this horizontal line in there? You're welcome, ZM. TRNX, we covered that one, EBDY. Yeah, I think we're up to speed. Okay. All right, as usual, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time on your busy schedule. You know how much I love doing these shows, and I have a blast doing them. So thanks for showing up. Anything unanswered, shoot me an email. Jonathan said, what length do you use for your historical volatility? 50, 5, 0, okay? And if you want the formulas, let me know. This right here, um, I'll give you that. That's the 50-day moving average on this one right here. Anyway, uh, thanks again, everybody, for coming. Any unanswered questions, you know the routine, daviddavelander.com. Everybody have a fantastic weekend if we don't talk again. And if not, uh, see you guys again next week. Thank you so much.